So, sometimes we talk about grail records when it comes to talking about collecting vinyl. And this is somewhat of a controversial subject, I should say. We have one side that think that the that sort of term is overused. And we have another side who thinks that it's just a sort of a, a label to put on a record that is really rare or something that you have been wanted for a long time. Now, I won't get into the sort of terminology when it comes to the word grail record, but I have to say that when it comes to this record that we're going to talk about today, there's no doubt in anyone's mind, I think, that this should not be... A, labeled as a, a true grail with all the bells and whistles and you know in its purest form and believe it or not this is actually the second time i have owned a copy of this record so if you like what i do please consider subscribing and i also have a ko-fi page uh, i leave a link down below it's actually a page where i upload material that you uh, decide so i'm talking about uh, different genres i'm sh showing different uh, top lists and and uh, and records just a sort of a vlog page but you uh, the members decide what i'm showing so you you are a part of deciding the content but uh, before we continue talking about July, <clears throat> cue music. And I don't know, but to, to really prove that this is truly a grail record, um, I just wanted to point out some sort of facts and information. Uh, in Pokora's second installment, the book that he uh, put out, I think there's nine volumes out right now. Uh, in the second one that he released, it figures in the United Kingdom sort of um, section as a six star value record. And what that means in Pokora terms is that it's worth more than a thousand euro. It, and this is his quote. <laughs> the crew crown jewel of vinyl. The record has also figured in most of the lists when it comes to sort after records and valuable records, like most valuable records of all time. And just to to uh, point out two um, magazines I have, Record Collector, from two different years. In this case, uh, the 200 rarest records today, and this is the 200 rarest record of all time which it figures in. But not to understate its sort of musical value, it's also uh, a part of Richard Morton Jack's fantastic book, Psychedelia from 1966 to 70, featured on two sides, like this. So there's a musical value, but what is the economical value to it? Uh, because it's a super rare record. Well, I, I looked up the last five years and a few times it's been up for sale that I could find. It has sold for uh, from between 2,000 euro all the way up to 4,700 euro, depending on the quality of the record. So if that wasn't enough of a sort of intro for you to, to get your interest up, then I don't know how to, to really do it. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the, the record and the, the music and how the hell I got my hands on it. First and foremost, July is often stated as one of the absolute pillars when it comes to UK psychedelic music. When people are talking about the best psych from the UK in this time period, this, the late 60s, July is often up there on the lists. And I sure, I can agree. It definitely, when it comes to the, the stuff that I've heard from the late 60s, I think that July definitely is up there with the best ones. Now, the information I'm going to tell you uh, about the band and the pressing and everything, I've to taken most of it from, from this book, actually, The Psych Psychedelia uh, by Richard Morton Jack. And also the small sort of booklet that comes with the CD box set. Uh, but with that being said, I mean, I could be wrong when it comes to some of the facts. So take it with a pinch of salt. And if anyone from July is watching this, 
please get in contact with me because I would love to to have a Zoom conversation uh, or something with uh, one of you guys to really talk about the the, the band and the music and the cultural uh, sort of impact that um, the, the Swing in London had uh, back in the day and obviously the record also. So J July, the, the band, it actually started as uh, the Tomcats playing on the sort of the circuits back in the day in, in London and getting somewhat of a reputation and a fan base and they got the attention of Alexis Corner which decided to be their manager. So everything was looking good for, for uh, the Tomcats and, and uh, they recorded some demos, they had a venue that they played at but that sort of club just closed the doors one day and the Tomcats split up. Some of the members of the Tomcats actually sort of revived the group and uh, actually got a contract with a venue in Madrid, Spain to to play everything worked out great in in madrid they they had a lot of dates that they played and they actually also released uh, some some singles in spain but under the name L uh, los tomcats <laughs> but in 1966 everything came to a halt when uh, one of the band members got a girl pregnant locally so they all had to 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 go home again to to england and the singer tom newman when he came back and and saw this sort of swinging london instead of of the very sort of ha hard and harsh uh, spain in this time period uh, he got super sort of inspired of the movement and uh, the, the the cultural phenomenon so he he continued to to write songs and the day came when when they actually revived the band once more uh, after hearing uh, sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band with the beatles turning everything like upside down really now they they really wanted to dive into psychedelic sort of music and in 1967 they made some demos and actually got um, uh, signed by the label major minor records so they were going into the studio and the timing couldn't be better because uh, if i read this correctly abbey road studios were updating some of its equipment so they sold that to major minors um studio or the studio that that july um uh, uh, or tomcats uh, recorded in so actually some of the equipment that was used to record the July record was some of the equipment that was used on the Sgt. Pepper record. So in the studio they managed to record a record that was both experimental but also very accessible. Playing with f facing and uh, manipulated tapes and also some overdubs. Just like they did on the on the Sgt. Pepper record. So they were still called the Tomcats or Lost Tomcats, uh, but they actually changed their name to July uh, when they were waiting for the for the record to be to be finished. And they actually played their first gig as July in June of 1968. And the cover artwork or the cover arrived. And uh, if I read correctly, the band was a little bit less than pleased. They didn't like it at all. And uh, Stephen Hill, who who uh, uh, made the, the cover artwork, he... Uh, said that he just got some pointers from the band and they said that they wanted spiders and and snakes crawling over human bodies uh, so i guess that this is the interpretation of that uh, but also to be fair the band has uh, stated uh, later on that they think that the the record cover grew on them as time went by and and i mean i love it i think it's one of the best record covers ever made it's so psychedelic it just hurts the eyes uh, fantastic so 1968 july it's out there on major minor records and it was actually also pressed in or released in in some other uh, countries um, and uh, on epic records in the states it was put out in stereo and what i could read is that there are no stereo uh, mixes done on any record uh, that is sort of authentic because what they did in the states were that they took the the, the mono track and put it on each uh, on, on each uh, channel 
and then uh, with EQ they sort of mixed it so they put the bass on one side and I think the mids in uh, another side something like that so there are no real stereo uh, mixes what I could read about at least so obviously it didn't matter if they got warm reviews from some of the best magazines back in the days like Melody Maker uh, writing there was a fantastic record it sold super poorly and uh, after some gigs the band split up shortly after this uh, Newman is um, uh, Tom Newman he had a somewhat uh, cool and uh, a great solo career but he uh, might be most sort of remembered for being the, one of the producers and the engineer of Tubular Bells so I think that he had a steady sort of gig at, at uh, Virgin Records and uh, two uh, other guys from July actually went on to form another band called Jade Warrior which uh, had um, great success on the Vertigo uh, label and the Vertigo swirls of those records are, are pretty hard to get nowadays and now modern times so to speak they have uh, got together some uh, in some form of constellation in one way or another to do some some uh, uh, july appearances and they have actually also recorded new material and put out new uh, records which i'll come back to a little bit later so there are a bunch of different sort of reissues and pressings and stuff like that when it comes to this record and the most sort of uh, rare one is the major minor original on in mono uh, but you know one way to really start things off if you are interested in diving into G july's catalog I think that this CD box set is, is hard to beat. It comes with a booklet with fantastic information and some of it I actually based this video on. I have the original Major Minor sort of um, record with uh, the mono. You also have the sort of epic one with stereo. You have the 2nd of July which I think is sort of outtakes or demos and stuff like that. And then there are also three other records and I'm, I'm, I haven't listened to this yet I have to be honest. Uh, so I don't know I think that some is maybe demo but the, these two I think are newly uh, written and uh, produced material from, from July. So all in all a great great box set to sort of start things off with. Another reissue that I have is that I bought because I wanted to have the physical copy of it um, in the days between uh, not have, having the original, not having the original, and now having the original again. I actually, 2014, they, they released this limited edition uh, record store day version on sort of splatter vinyl. I don't know if this is blood vomit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, but they actually, they actually uh, made a great job with this, uh, whoever pressed it. It sounds great, it's in the mono, it's the mono mix, so they did everything right. The only thing I can't really find out is, is how many was pressed. It only says it's limited, but I couldn't find any number, so I don't know how limited it is. But you can still find this, I don't know if it's in stores, but you can find it on the used market for not much at all, like 25, 30 euro maybe. And I know that there are also one press from 2017, that is the latest one that, that was made by uh, Music on Vinyl don't have that have never heard it and the only thing i read was that it's in stereo and we all know about the stereo sort of issues i guess so um i mean fans be advised so now we're closing in on the on the original press that i'm going to show you um but but first i actually i haven't heard any one of the other 1968 pressings out there so i have no idea how the stereo us version sounds like when it comes to the vinyl uh, there are a Brazilian press and there are also a Japanese press from 1968. I have no idea how they sound or the rarity and the collectability and stuff like that uh, actually. Uh, the, the only thing I know is that, and I have had my eye on this, is that there are a very affordable version released in 1987 uh, on a pretty small record label I think. Uh, it has a different cover artwork, but uh, it's, as I said, very affordable. Now, 
it's in stereo and again we know about the stereo mix so i don't know how it sounds but if it's it's affordable so if i see it i will probably get it just to to see what this sort of sound quality is so the original press i am actually one of few in the world i think so anyway that have had two copies of this the first one i sold and the story behind uh, that is that i found that uh, in sort of VG, VG plus uh, condition in a bag with shit records going to the dumpster. So I actually saved it from Annihilation. I played it like a few times during the two years that I had it. But due to personal circumstances, I had to or I sold it uh, to a fantastic uh, collector here in Sweden. So it got a, a great uh, home. But I regretted it ever since and if you want you can go and check out the, the interview I did with Stefan Dimle. Uh, it should be here on the channel if it's not out, out uh, it, it's uh, going out uh, any day uh, any day now. Uh, where we talk about when he bought the record from me and, and uh, regretting selling sort of stuff uh, from the collection. But I, I don't know if you believe in karma. I don't, but it's hard not to believe it when it comes to this because just now, three uh, weeks ago and also a, I think eight years after I sold it, I bought a huge record collection and in that collection I found the second copy uh, that I have had of this record in fantastic fantastic collection on sort of untouched um, uh, spine fantastic um, <coughs> laminated sleeve on on the front without any sort of steam splits or creases or anything and uh, if i've the copies i've seen for sale always have bad really really bad ring wear on the backside because it's not laminated it's it's a text te sort of textured sleeve or just paper sleeve uh, so bad bad ring wear which this doesn't have when it comes to the record i shit you not i think that i was the first one who actually dropped the needle on it when um when i played it it's in perfect perfect condition no uh, no ticks and no pops through the entire thing just insane so again when it comes to karma i don't believe in it but but it's hard not to believe uh, believe it when uh, when it comes to this because it's impossible to even see one copy to to own a copy is uh, i don't i don't know very few people in the world has owned a copy and I have actually had two now and this is definitely going into the collection and staying in the collection. So the only thing that I couldn't find really is how many was pressed back in the day in 1968 and how many was sold so some sort of statistic of how many were were uh, sort of available back in the day for people and also but this is, is even harder to to find out but but uh, how many are in rotation today uh, uh, amongst the different collectors uh, out there that would be awesome if you have any sort of information about this please write in the comment down below it would be awesome to to know a little bit more about how many were were uh, pressed and sold so that was my small uh, contribution on, on giving the people information about the July record. And I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, just write them down below and I'll see if I can... Uh, if I don't know it, I'll, I'll try to find the information in one way or another. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm super happy to be able to, to do this video and to spread the awareness of July um, to people. And, and obviously, if you've seen this video uh, that was far if you haven't listened to the record go listen to the record do that today i'm i'm envious of you if you haven't heard it and uh, so yeah and i'll talk to you in my next video have a great day everyone bye well hello there you beautiful bastard what do you want me to talk about next in future videos well write that down in the comments and i'll add it to the sort of video topic planning queue and i'll talk to you in my next video have a great day bye